Many of you viewers tell me you haven't moved on to 12 speed and you don't need it. And then Nuke Proof sent me a brand new Scout with Shimano Dior 10 speed on it. And it got me thinking, is 10 speed so bad? Do we really need 12 gears? SRAM brought out the Eagle drivetrain back in 2016 and they promptly declared the death of the front derailleur because it offered 500% gear range, which was comparable to most two by systems at the time. Then Shimano brought out their microspline free hub bodies, which allowed you to put a tiny 10 tooth cog on the cassette. And that gave you 510% range. And then SRAM came back out with this, the 10 to 52 tooth cassette, which offered you 520% gear range. Uh, and more is better isn't it? Well, let's dive a little deeper into that. So to work out the gear range of your cassette, you need to take the biggest gear, which is a 52 on here, divide it by the smallest gear, which is a 10, and then times it by 100 to represent it as a percentage. So for this, it's 520%. Now on my 10 speed over here, I've got a 48 tooth, divide that by the 11 and times it by 100, that gives me 436%. Well, that sounds rubbish in comparison to this, right? Well, I mean, that percentage doesn't really tell us anything about what's going on between the biggest and the smallest ring. It doesn't tell us how many gears we've got, and it doesn't tell us about the increments in which you have to get to those higher gears. So I think what we've become used to is seeing that bigger percentage and thinking, well, that bigger percentage means we get that easier gear. But if the easier gear is all we care about, well, that means we should be talking about gear ratios. So uh, let's dive into what that really means. Gear ratios are ratios because they take into account the second cog and show the relationship between the two. So if you were in a 30 tooth at the front and a 10 tooth at the back, then you have a 30 to 10 gear ratio. So as the 10 is three times smaller than the 30, we know that that little cog at the rear will rotate three times in the time it takes to make one pedal revolution at the front. So as the cogs turn the back at the rear wheel, we know that the smaller cogs on the back cover more distance, but they will feel harder. Bigger cogs will take longer to rotate with one pedal revolution. So we know they cover less distance, but they also feel easier. But we can also turn these gear ratios into decimals. So a 30 divided by 10 is three, meaning the cog will turn three times with one pedal revolution. And three is quite high for a gear ratio. One or lower is a nicer climbing gear, obviously depending on how powerful you are or how heavy your bike is but it gives you good cadence. If we were to plot all of these decimals onto a table, we can quickly look over the crossovers. So we can see that a 30 tooth front chain ring with a whopping 52 tooth at the back achieves the same gear ratio as a 28 tooth at the front with a 48 tooth at the back. This means it will travel the same distance and it will feel the same easiness as that fancy 12-speed Eagle's easiest gear. So gear ratios tell me that I can match this nice, easy Eagle gear here. And all I have to do is swap this cassette from a 46 tooth to a 48 tooth cassette. And I need to swap my front chain ring from a 30 to a 28. Um, the problem is that Shimano don't actually make 28 tooth chain rings anymore. And they're really hard to find. Um, and they won't actually fit on a Shimano crank set either. So I would have to find some alternative cranks. 
And well, I've kind of gone halfway to replacing the entire drivetrain at this stage by doing that. Now there is actually a third cog in this scenario and that is your wheel. So if you were to have a smaller wheel, you would cover less distance. But as we know already, that feels easier. So you could make it slightly easier with smaller wheels. And maybe that's why you retro nerds out there love the 10 speed still, especially if you're on 26 inch wheels. But that also explains why we needed the SRAM Eagle drivetrain in the first place, because we're all now obsessed with the bigger wheels like the 29er. And now if you want to get super nerdy, now you can go to Sheldon Brown's gear calculator. I'll leave the link on the screen and that will allow you to start working out those two gears and the wheel size and it even takes into account the crank lengths as well. Now there's actually a bigger problem here than just the availability of small chain rings. If you had a chain ring that is too small, your chain might actually rub on the frame because bikes these days are optimized for bigger front chain rings. In fact, if you have a full suspension bike, a smaller chain ring might actually affect the performance of your rear suspension. Huh? So when we see these anti-squat numbers, it will be with a particular gearing in mind because chain ring size will affect the anti-squat. A larger front chain ring may be more resistant to suspension compression when pedaling, which makes them more efficient climbers, but this can lead to a firmer suspension feel. Small chain rings have a less taut chain effectively, so less chance of pedal kickback for sure, uh, and a nice active rear suspension feel, but too much and it'll just bob under pedaling up the climbs. Oh, my head hurts. Should we uh, just wrap this up and get to the conclusion? So as I've explained, with a 10-speed drivetrain, you get those 10 gears somewhere in the middle of a 12-speed cassette, which means that you lose out on that easy gear for climbing up hills, and you miss out on that bottom gear that's nice and fast and efficient. But if that's not a problem to you, then you will afford a drivetrain that's almost half the cost of a 12-speed drivetrain. In fact, if we look at this cassette alone, a Shimano Dior 10-speed cassette costs around about £35 here in the UK and a Shimano Dior 12-speed costs around about £95. So even replacing parts will be a lot more affordable. So if you don't need the easier gear and you don't need the harder gear, then no, you don't need 12-speed. But 12-speed does afford us some better gear range. So we can go from hill spin to fire road sprint in just one cassette which is great and we certainly do need some slightly easier gears now that we're moving up into bigger wheel sizes but i want to know what you guys think do you think we need 12 speed are you still on 10 or 11 speed and are you happy and why do you think that is uh, let me know down in the comments below and we'll start up that debate for our future gmbn tech community to join in with